group tonight in COVID-19 lockdown here in South Australia. Um, we've got uh, Andy, VK5LA, um, has come to uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, FMDXing. And uh, we're uh, <clears throat> very glad that we've got Zoom and, and that Zoom is working for us. Uh, otherwise, it would have been a bit hard for us to meet at the meeting hall this week um, with all of the shenanigans here in South Australia. So without further ado, I'll uh, throw it over to you, Andy, and I'll, uh, I'll throw the spotlight up and uh, we'll uh, get you to take it away. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Andy, uh, VK5LA, obviously, and uh, thanks for having me. Um, thought, uh, Grant asked me um, way back in, uh, oh, I think it might have been around about this time last year, to um, give a bit of a talk on on FMDXing because he... Uh, I think he just joined the um, FM, uh, TV and FMDXing page on on Facebook, um, which has uh, become uh, uh, very popular. And um, so here we are. So I, I just want to start and um, just let everyone know that um, I really don't profess to know an awful lot about this. There's probably people out there which know for, know um, a lot more about this than uh, than me. Um, and have probably been doing it for uh, for many, many years. I've been doing this off and on for uh, probably since I was a teenager, actually. Um, the first time um, I actually um, I got uh, sort of interested in amateur radio was when uh, my brother decided he was going to tune in uh, Channel Zero from, I believe, uh, Toowoomba or uh, somewhere up there in Queensland on our Rank Arena tele tele television um, in probably around about 19... I don't know, 70 something, 75 or something like that. And that sort of um, uh, bit the bug. So um, without further ado, I'll go straight into the um, um, uh, grant and forms me that would have been uh, TV, TVQ in, in Brisbane. Um, so I'll go into a, um, a bit of a, a slideshow and um, we'll, uh, we'll get through this. And then I've, uh, I've got a demo set up here. Um, we'll fire up the... Uh, Radio that I'm currently using to do the um, FMDXing and uh, see if we can't uh, have a bit of a look. Uh, this morning was really good. Um, I had uh, some really good stations out to about um, uh, 700 kilometres. So hopefully tonight's going to be um, going to be okay. I just had a look at the barometer. It is uh, on the way up, so uh, that's a good sign. Okay, so I'll just share the screen. I hope I'm getting this right. Grant will let me know if I'm uh, if I'm not. So we'll go and we'll share that and we'll go from the beginning. Okay, a broadcast band DXing, obviously I'm Andy VK5LA. Um, okay, so what is it? A brief history. It began in, or well, the FM band um, began in 1947, which really surprised me actually when I was doing the research uh, for this, I didn't realise that um, it had actually begun in, in 1947 in Australia, um, capital cities um, experimentally. Um, let's see if I can move that out of the way. Uh, using an ABC national network mono feed, um, classical music and parliament. Uh, shut down in 1961 due to issues with the VHF TV channels uh, three, four and five. Um, and being ham radio guys, we know all about that. And then the FM broadcast was uh, slated for UHF was abandoned as impractical and uneconomic by the Whitland government. And then the FM ban was reopened in 1975 uh, with a few issues of interference which have, uh, have now been resolved. So it's been uh, around for, uh, for quite a while. Um, my memories of the, uh, of the FM ban was when uh, SAFM was launched in, uh, in Adelaide uh, all those years ago. Um, I think uh, just about every kid uh, had an SAFM card, or actually might have been a double SAFM back uh, in those days. Um, and uh, what goes around comes around because I believe SAFM is now um, using the call sign from uh, its old hit, hit, um, hit, hit 107, something like that anyway. So what actually is FMDX? Well, it can actually be anything you want it to be really. Uh, any station that's not a local station, I suppose, is probably uh, the best way to describe it. Something that you don't normally hear, um, low power community stations, national broadcaster, translators, commercial and community stations in locations such as rural areas, high power commercial, national or community broadcast stations located in other states, 
it's whatever you regard as DX really. So it can be, uh, it can be anything. Uh, and why would you want to actually listen for broadcast band DX? Um, quite a few uh, various reasons, uh, reasons, especially if you're a ham, um, as an indicator for uh, six metre activity, um, as a precursor to two metres activity, uh, for studying prop, um, tropospheric propagation, for studying sporadic E, uh, aircraft enhancement, uh, F2 propagation at a sunspot maxima, um, actually because you can um, and because it's fun. Okay, hardware. What do you need to listen to these stations? Basically, you need a receiver. Um, it's as simple as that. Um, an antenna that's located in the clear and up above the surrounding buildings is even better. Um, fed with decent quality cable, so half your uh, signal isn't being lost in, uh, in cable losses. Um, quality connectors, again, you want as maximum uh, signal down to that receiver as you can. Um, and you just have to be uh, interested. And uh, if you um, are right into uh, sporadic E sort of stuff, you have to be in the right place at the right time, that's for sure. Okay, your radio should obviously be sensitive. Um, it should be selective. Um, it should be able to handle strong adjacent stations. Um, and it's great if it's got RDS on it. RDS stands for Radio Data System, and we'll get into that a little bit uh, later. It helps if it's got uh, that, and that will certainly um, help you with uh, identifying what you're actually listening to. Memories are obviously nice to have. Um, if you like, you can program stuff in that you've heard in there and just have a flick through and uh, um, go back to them. And that's always a very handy feature to have. Um, great if it can be taken portable. And most of us already have a really good um, car radio uh, in our car, um, probably in the last, um, I'd say, uh, five years, most of the, uh, the cars out there now have uh, actually a quite, um, quite a very good uh, um, receiver, um, probably due to the fact that they're more than likely using a, um, a particular chipset, which is um, uh, sort of uh, optimised for the uh, FM band and especially uh, overseas, because their uh, station spacing is, um, is half of what ours is. So, uh, Basically, it has to be really good. Uh, still on the car radio, um, if your vehicle is reasonably uh, new, say 10 years, five years, um, it's the ideal starter. If you've not, never done uh, this uh, sort of stuff before, it's the, uh, the ideal way to start. Some are better than others, but most are very, very sensitive. Um, even uh, I've actually noticed the last uh, two cars that I've had the, uh, the radio has actually been able to hear just about uh, just about anything. Um, very selective, and many have RDS capability, especially the more uh, the more modern ones. That's for sure. And the best part about it is it actually comes with an antenna. Um, you don't have to worry about an antenna with your car because there's already one on there, and um, <laughs> most of them are uh, optimised uh, to do uh, what they need to do. I notice I've got a, a reasonably new uh, car. Um, and the antenna is about, um, I think it's around about um, 11 inches long. So there's obviously some uh, sort of preamp in there or, or what have you, but um, it certainly works very well. Um, as I say down there, uh, designed for maximum sensitivity with a short car antenna. Super selective, usually three or four IF filters, often with DSP these days on the modern um, car radios uh, to maximise performance in a moving environment and also to, uh, to have um, good um, selectivity uh, in overseas markets where their uh, where their spacing is um, 100 kilohertz compared to our uh, 200 kilohertz, and just about everyone um, in the last um, probably uh, at least five years is, is RDS capable. So using it as a base station um, is actually a pretty good idea because these things are really good. Um, so if you have a um, um, a base station and you're after an aftermarket car radio from the big box retailers like your super cheap autos and your auto pros and stuff like that. Um, I actually got a Kenwood um, car radio from uh, super cheap going back a couple of years and uh, it's just amazing. It's, it works really, really well. Um, I just, it's just powered from the shack power supply 
and um, it, you don't really have to spend an awful lot of uh, money and you get a lot of radio. And you can see in the background there, that's the Kenwood radio displaying the, um, um, the local um, uh, use station, not use station, but the local commercial radio station up here on 93.1. Um, and this is before it was um, um, switched over to RDS. So it's not displaying its um, Magic FM uh, thing at the moment, but uh, it does now. Um, so where do you get these, thing, these things uh, from? Um, basically, if you go to somewhere like, um, uh, as I say before, a super cheaps and auto pros, often uh, you'd be surprised if you're just after something which is um, will get you on the band, Ask from family and friends because most of them uh, will have a an old car radio in their shed that they don't want. Uh, you you'd be surprised. Uh, wreckers and dump shops and all places like that they've all got uh, old car radios. Um, Facebook, uh, Facebook Marketplace, all of those sort of places. Uh, you shouldn't have too much uh, trouble trying to find something. That's for sure. Um, what if you want to do something like um, an old component or something like that? Basically, you say your dad's Morang, Yamaha, Sansui, Rotel, Onkyo were mostly great quality, sensitive and selective receivers. Uh, maybe not so good in the strong signal department. Um, they have a usually are a mixture of, of analog and digital. Some of the newer ones might have a bit of both. Um, usually they don't have RDS, especially on something that's old. Um, if you like playing around with the receivers and stuff like that, some of the older designs um, lend themselves to mods for the for the IF. And there's actually lots and lots of uh, information on the internet um, about that. Uh, you'd be surprised the amount of people that actually mod their um, old uh, radio to uh, to get the uh, the filtering a bit more uh, sharper. It's actually quite common. So it's a really good entry level to uh, to go along that way, especially if it's free and um, you know, as I say, it's dad's old stereo. They are actually built for um, fidelity, um, probably not necessarily for uh, DX, but there's obviously uh, some that'll be better than others. But um, it, it's a good choice, um, you know, if you're on a budget and you're starting out and, and you want to be uh, something on the uh, on the cheap there. And there's a few special specialty uh, FM radios around the place. Um, probably one of the kings of the crop is the Sony XDR-F1HD. Um, that's sort of uh, regarded as the as the modern benchmark. Um, got a bit of a cult following. There's lots and lots of pages on the internet uh, devoted to it, devoted to the mods, uh, the stuff that you can do to it, making it more reliable, um, hints, uh, uh, tips and tricks, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, uh, Brian Beasley, uh, K6STI, has a very good page dedicated to this receiver. Um, uh, he actually uh, really uh, puts it through its um, paces, um, does some uh, extensive measurements and testing on it, and uh, it certainly uh, certainly does uh, come up trumps, that's for sure. Um, the Sony XDR has, has RDS. Um, it also has HRDS for the USA market. We don't have it here stands for, I think it's called HD RDS. It's um, something else which I don't really know an awful lot about, but uh, it's not something that's uh, it's activated uh, in Australia. Of various um, um, models of this, like the XDR S10, um, uses the same receiver, but it's uh, it's something that's got a uh, an iPod dock and it's a clock radio. So I've actually got one of those as well, um, and it's uh, it's a pretty good, and uh, that's uh, it's also a a lot of fun. But um, yeah, it's if you if you're right into um, um, seeing what you can uh, pull out of the uh, the noise, uh, something like that is uh, is pretty good. Uh, they're a very very good receiver, that's for sure. Um, other noticeable mentions. A lot of the major manufacturers of this sort of gear um, do have uh, pretty good, um, pretty good models. Sang can make a couple of really good ones. Uh, Texan um, slash Grundig apparently come out of the same uh, uh, same factory. Kenwood KT eighty eight D is also uh, something that's got a bit of a cult following. Plenty of information on the internet about that, and um, I'm not quite sure how you replace, how do you uh, pronounce this. I think it's called Blarpunkt. Um, a very common uh, European uh, manufacturer uh, on uh, car stereos and uh, apparently their uh, 
receivers are pretty good as well. Okay, um, SDR radios. Obviously, uh, with the explosion of SDR radios, especially ones that have been uh, more affordable um, in the last uh, few years, have, uh, have got a wide uh, acceptance now, that's for sure. Um, they need good software to, uh, to maximise the, uh, the things you want to do with them, um, especially if you want to get RDS information out of them. It's actually quite um, a bit of a chore to find uh, good software that ticks all the boxes. Um, and uh, to get it that does uh, RDS is obviously a, a bonus. Uh, very tweakable in terms of uh, being able to adjust the gain and the filtering and, uh, and what have you. Um, standard $25 eBay dongles that you get, uh, even though they'll listen on the, uh, on the FM band, they're pretty poor DX, uh, DX performers, especially if, if you're in a situation uh, like I am, or uh, if you lived in, uh, in Adelaide and had a, uh, like a, a line of sight to Mount Lofty, um, they'd, be, uh, they'd be pretty ordinary, ordinary, that's for sure. Where I am now, I look out my window and I can see the uh, transmitting tower in uh, in Loxton. It's about 19 kilometres away, so that's uh, something that I have to uh, deal with and uh, get around uh, as well. But I'll touch on that a bit more uh, a bit later. There's quite a few software um, uh, manufacturers in the market. Um, Elad from Italy, SDR Play in England, Airspy, uh, quite a few others. Um, I haven't had any. Um, uh, experience with any of them except for SDR um, uh, Play. Um, I've got a uh, an SDR PA1 here, I think it's called. Um, that's what we use for uh, the main radio these days, and uh, it works very well. SBY2, I believe, is also uh, very good. Okay, so once you've um, basically uh, got all that, um, you know, you've got a receiver and everything like that, and then you've got to find out. Uh, what the actual station is. So the radio's got um, RDS, radio data system is very, very useful because obviously it tells you what the station is where you don't have to go looking in databases or, uh, or whatever you to, uh, to look it up and find it out. So you just wait for the uh, station to announce their call sign. Okay, this is a real bugbear of mine because um, back in the old days, uh, when uh, radio stations used to back announce after uh, each song and uh, and what have you, and uh, tell you a what the song was, which they hardly do anymore, and b tell you what their station is, um, which uh, is very frustrating because some of them only uh, uh, only ID uh, you know every uh, half an hour or uh, even an hour after the news. It's uh, quite frustrating to sit there for uh, for hours or not hours, but for a long time trying to find a. Uh, a station when uh, they're talking away and you're hearing them perfectly well, but they won't tell you who you are and you don't know. So the ACMA database will tell you most of what you need to know, 99% of the time. Um, and Triple J is your friend because Triple J is actually uh, very good at um, announcing their uh, call sign just about every song. Um, so you won't have any problems with, uh, with Triple J. So what is RDS? Well, RDS stands for Radio Data System, and it's a communication protocol for embedding small amounts of station information into an FM broadcast. It's data at, uh, this is the technical side of things, it's the data at 1,187 and a half bits per second on a uh, 57 kilohertz subcarrier, the third harmonic of the 19 kilohertz FM stereo pilot tone. And uh, when we do the demo a bit later, I can, uh, I can show you that. The type of data transmitted can include uh, the AF code, which is the alternative frequencies list. So if you've got a station, uh, say for instance, up here we have Power, Power FM in the, in the hills. I think they've got uh, three frequencies that they use. Um, and if we're getting uh, a Power FM uh, RDS signal, it normally tells you uh, uh, the other ones that it's uh, it's on. Uh, same with the three MBA in, uh, in Mildura, Hot FM. Um, give you their Robin Vale frequency as well as the, um, uh, I think it's Oyen and somewhere else where they have uh, where they transmit from. So that's also uh, quite handy. CT, clock, time and date. Never actually seen that in a station um, on, uh, on here. Not saying that it doesn't happen in Australia, but uh, I don't believe it does. Um, the all important Pi code. So that's your four digit hexadecimal, hexadecimal station ID code. 
So basically what's happening there is uh, every station has an ID code and um, in South Australia, most of the uh, commercial stations, they'll start with, um, uh, with five. And uh, say, for instance, if you're on um, uh, listening to SAFM, their, their station ID code is 5071, um, something to do with their frequency. And you, and you do find that with most of the uh, commercial stations. Um, ABC um, march their own drum. The, uh, they don't sort of uh, measure up or they don't match what the state they're in or, or, the, or, the, or what, um, um, sorry. They don't match the state they're in uh, compared to, say, um, a commercial station. And also PS, which is what we're obviously interested in, is the station name. So another one is uh, PTY, which is the program type. So that'll be news, drama, easy listening, very, there's a quite a big um, list of those and uh, they differ between um, regions. Um, so what is what is called, um, say, classical music in uh, Australia is uh, not necessarily called classical in uh, the US. Um, not all stations on RDS I've seen have um, uh, been transmitting a PTY code. Some do, some don't. Um, doesn't uh, doesn't sort of happen uh, um, a lot. Radio text, um, this is actually quite common. You quite often get a, um, um, a free form station announcement slogans, titles, tracks, artists, um, not all, but uh, it's quite uh, it's quite common. And um, yeah, it all depends on the station as to what they uh, they transmit. Uh, sometimes they don't transmit anything. You can uh, you can plainly see the um, the 57 kilohertz uh, um, uh, spurs in the in the audio spectrum, but uh, there's no uh, there's no um, uh, RDS. So for whatever reason, it's either a switched off or uh, they're just not transmitting it for whatever reason. Um, some of the cheaper ones um, only only will stay uh, only display the station uh, PS code, so um, you'll only get the uh, the program service name. So you'll only know what the station is called. You won't get any other information. Um, and uh, I've found that uh, on the uh, Sony receivers, um, when you use them in Australia, you only get um, you only get a PS code. It's all um, it's all all, to, all um, done by uh, marketing, I suppose, as to what they uh, what they want you to see in in various countries. So um, um, it's a bit of a um, a bit of a mystery as to why they don't uh, show you everything. Some uh, some receivers do, and some receivers don't. Okay, um, the best receiver is obviously the one that's switched on and listening, and the one that's got power to it. So go with what you have access to or what you can afford. Uh, you need a receiver with an external antenna socket, um, most definitely. If you can plug an antenna in, um, that's half the battle. Upgrade. It's fun to try different receiver technology. Um, so, you know, you might have a, uh, um, you know, your dad's old Marantz or, or whatever, and uh, you think, well, I want to see if I can do a little bit better than that. So I might be trying to get something else. There's plenty out there. So, Played around with a lot of uh, a lot of the stuff, and um, I would uh, I would certainly uh, put the SDRs at the uh, at the top of the list, not necessarily for you know being the most sensitive and the, and the most selective, but the, being the most versatile. Um, you know, just one bit of software and a, a tiny box will uh, will get you a lot of fun. That's for sure. Our radio is certainly uh, up there uh, with it as well because. Um, I just use a car radio uh, with a an omnidirectional antenna, and I hear amazing amount of uh, DX, especially sporadic E stuff from Queensland and New South Wales and uh, all over the place. Uh, even Perth, um, it's uh, it's quite uh, quite good when it's uh, when it's really going. Dedicated FM radios, yeah, sort of middle of the road, and and Dad's tuner are, are down the uh, the bottom there. Um, you know. This is just my experience. You know, people might have uh, might have other um, successes, uh, and it might um, also depend a lot on where you where you actually live. If you lived in the middle of nowhere, where no close in uh, where no close in um, uh, transmitters, uh, you know, you might even get away with a uh, an SDR dongle. Um, but uh, certainly uh, hasn't been the case for me. That's for sure. All right, the all important antenna. So. Um, 
just about uh, anything will uh, will work. Um, vertical, horizontal, omni, yagis, longwires. Um, get it as high as you can uh, safely and within your budget and feed it with quality cable and, and decent connectors. And weatherproof them um, and you'll, uh, you'll be right. Okay, your ground plane um, will certainly work. It's very cheap, very quick to make, um, probably an average DX antenna, more suited to a location that has no close in, uh, in transmitters. Um, uh, great for a sporadic heat because you, just about any antenna is going to hear stuff on uh, sporadic key. Obviously, if you've got big gain antennas that you can point at it, it's going to be better. But um, as I say, I've heard plenty of sporadic key from Queensland uh, on a very humble uh, Omni. So um, yeah, you don't need a, uh, an awful lot. It's pretty much like uh, six metres. Plenty of us here have worked um, you know, a lot of miles with uh, six metres with a short vertical, that's for sure. Put it up on a simple mast, like a, just a you know a lump of water pipe or whatever, and get it as high as possible. Lash it to your pergola or uh, whatever you want to do. Or if you've got a tower and you want to stick it at um, you know below your two meter antenna on your tower, you can basically do what you want. Um, if you're just starting out, um, I've had a bit of experience with these um, flower pot antennas from uh, VK2ZOI. And they'd really, um, you'd be able to make a very practical and very, uh, very good antenna uh, out of, uh, out of some pretty cheap, uh, pretty cheap stuff. Um, if you go on his web page, um, uh, showing there, uh, vk2zoi.com, he's got um, quite a, a lot of information about his flower pot antenna. So basically, there all the information. All the information is there. Um, if you want to do one for the FM band, it's uh, it's ten turns on thirty-two millimeter PVC conduit for the um, for the coil. Um, the coil uh, goes up to the shield on bit of coax, which is about seven hundred and fifty meters. Sorry, seven hundred and fifty millimeters long, and then the uh, the bit where the shield is taken off is about seven sixty-five. Um, not super critical because we're not transmitting obviously but uh, I actually made one to those dimensions and uh, put it on a VNA and it, uh, it looked all right to me that's for sure so something like that if you don't have an antenna very quick to make and uh, it will work uh, pretty well that's for sure horizontal antenna the old FM folded dipole you know the one that came with um, with dad's Marantz is the old um, bit of ribbon in a, in a T Put it out the window. That was the uh, the first antenna that I used at uh, my bedroom window, uh, and nailed it to the uh, to the eaves around the the house, or the um, what is it the uh, the bit below the uh, the gutter there, and uh, that's what I used um, as a uh, an antenna. Um, omnidirectional halos. Um, you can see in the background there of the um, um, slide there that you might be able to see. I'm not quite sure how well it's going to translate to the um, the Zoom meeting, but that's my omnidirectional antenna, which is nestled amongst the um, the swinging palm trees of Shears Willis, and um, that's just a little commercial um, Matchmaster omnidirectional antenna that I picked up uh, several years ago. Um, just uh, all it is, I think it's the same as a halo, um, just like a like a um, a smaller two meter halo. So uh, it's very, very, uh, very, very good antenna. That's for sure. Uggies, obviously, um, probably your best bet if you want to get a little bit serious, where you can point it in the direction that you want to listen. Multiple stations on the one frequency by rotating the antenna in different directions on good openings. And uh, I was actually had that uh, this morning. I had um, 106.7 from um, Mildura this morning and uh, turned the antenna up towards uh, the bluff. And I had um, the ABC on uh, one, on the same frequency. So um, that's certainly uh, good for uh, for doing that. That's for sure. And the number of elements is up to you. Um, so you can see in the background there, mine's a uh, commercial Matchmaster uh, Yagi, um, which is uh, very good. Um, I don't normally buy antennas, but uh, I decided that um, I would for uh, for this uh, aspect of the uh, the hobby. Um, I just wanted to get something up um, um, quickly. I won't say it was cheap because it wasn't, but um, it certainly got the, got it up there uh, uh, quickly. Um, but um, you know, it's got good specs and everything like that, and it certainly works. It works really, really well. 
Um, if you wanted to build your own, probably your best bet would be go down the path of something like um, the JDI, um, sorry, the VK5 DJ uh, Yagi calculator. Um, good part about that, actually, the, the really, really good part about that program is, is basically you tell it what materials you've got access to um, and it calculates your antenna. So uh, if you wanted to make a, uh, an FM Yagi off of that, I don't think you'd have any problems at all. And if you've got um, old FM Yagis, or sorry, old TV Yagis lying around, they're excellent um, sources of parts to build it, like, you know, feed points and insulators and, uh, and what have you. So um, there's no excuse. You can build one or buy one, but um, if you want to get a little bit more serious, a Yagi is probably the way to go. Long wire antenna. I hope he's listening. He might be able to pipe up a little bit later on and, uh, and let us know uh, uh, how uh, it's uh, it's going. Um, I hadn't really heard of this, but um, VK2KRR reports that his long wire is actually his 160 metre beverage is a pretty good antenna for sporadic E and allows him to cut out tropo signals due to its low height and only on uh, receive E signals during the day. He um, he reports that uh, it's also very low uh, very low noise and he's um, he's posted quite a few. Uh, um, very um, very good spots on the um, on the TV and FMDX uh, Facebook page, and uh, yeah, he's uh, he does it well with the um, with the long wire, so it's uh, quite interesting how well it works. Good example of thinking outside of the square too, so because DX is basically uh, is where you find it, so uh, good on Lee for um, um, you know giving something else a, a go and, and getting some results. That's great. Okay, so the best antenna is the one that's actually plugged in. I'm not really much point in uh, having a great antenna if it's not plugged into a uh, receiver that's switched on. So directivity is obviously better for you if you're, uh, if you're gonna be serious. Um, and if you can rotate that antenna as well, it's, uh, it's very handy. Um, I don't uh, stretch to that luxury at the, uh, at the moment. Mine's still very much on, a, uh, on an Armstrong uh, rotator. Um, a vertical at a decent height is fine for a sporadic E. Certainly is. Ultimate choice comes down to your level of interest, and you know how much money you're prepared to spend. Really, um, also uh, quality cables and connectors comes into it as well. And uh, long cable runs might benefit from a masthead preamp. I know uh, I know Lee uses a, a masthead preamp on his uh, on his main array, um, um, only because it's on a, a pretty high tower and it's a fair bit uh, from the. Uh, from the shack and um, yeah, it certainly would all help, but uh, I'd be useless running a preamp here because I'm too too close to a transmitter. Um, and I reckon most people in Adelaide would uh, probably wouldn't benefit all that much either. You really need to be away from a, uh, a transmitter to benefit from a, a preamp. The chase. Okay, so once you've found something and you've and you've got a station uh, that you're listening to and you don't know where it's from because they haven't told you it's Triple J every 30 seconds. Um, it's not uh, ABC Classic FM because there's no classical music and it's uh, it's either talking or uh, or music. No RDS. Uh, how do you find out what you're listening to? Okay. As I say, yeah, there uh, some stations are easy to ID, but others can be uh, quite elusive. Um, stations like ABC Classic FM are obvious by the program material. Triple J is your friend. Um, some stations hardly ever ID, and uh, then you know, add fading into the equation if you're trying to you know get a, a weak station. Um, yeah, it can make it difficult. RDS, of course, uh, makes ID a snap. But some good old-fashioned detective work is often needed. Okay, I'm hearing an ABC FM, um, and it's obvious that uh, it's ABC FM because it's um, classical music, but uh, which ABC FM? Where is it uh, transmitting from? Okay, um, when's the best time to listen? Spring and summer are the peak times for, uh, for your tropo ducting and also for your um, for ease. Um, I say peak times because obviously uh, it can happen all year round, but um, you generally tend to, uh, to have better, better success in the spring and the summer. A thousand kilometres on, on very uh, strong openings, um, 700, 500 are more common for, um, um, for tropo. Closer in stuff is very, very common and uh, you quite often uh, hear it, um, you know, 
maybe five out of seven days of the week, only when it's really, uh, really, really ordinary weather in the middle of a, um, you know, when the barom barometer goes quite low, uh, windy, cloudy, rainy, that sort of stuff that, that sort of puts a dampener on things. Um, your summer ease from December to January is um, just about set your watch by it every year. Uh, usually it's very intense. Um, we have actually have had um, a couple of um, ordinary years uh, Last year was, was quite good, I thought. The year before that was um, probably not as um, not as good. East propagation is is you know is that what I a thousand case plus really. So you know from here in VK five to VK six, VK seven, VK eight, northern VK two, you know um, southern VK four, far north Queensland, all of those. That's, that's sort of the uh, the distances that I've been able to uh, to get. Um, throw in. Um, um, New Zealand there as well, um, and uh, Perth. So um, yeah, it can be uh, a, a long way, that's for sure. Um, the usual indications uh, or indicators apply. So you know, if you're checking Hepburn and Beacons and and what have you, Facebook people will soon let you know when the band starts um, jumping. And um, yeah, I I, I pray, place a a strong uh, strong emphasis on the, uh, the barometer. I've got a barometer here in the shack and. Uh, if I notice that it's rising, then I go and turn the FM radio on because I know I'm going to hear something. Um, Propo is normally early mornings and to a lesser extent um, late afternoons. Uh, obviously, there's some exceptions to that as well. But um, today, for instance, I had um, uh, 97, sorry, 99.7, which is in Griffith, um, hit 99.7 in Griffith. I had that um, into about lunchtime today. Um, which doesn't normally happen. Um, yeah, only sort of really uh, get that station uh, in in good tropo openings, and uh, it's normally only there for uh, a couple of hours, but um, hung around all day or most of ha half the day today. Uh, aircraft enhancement pretty easy to spot when you've got an aircraft enhanced signal because you get the flutter, um, and normally it's uh, it's pretty uh, it's pretty straight. Um, um, sorry, it's pretty short lived, um, but yeah, you see no when it's in a plane because you get that uh, uh, characteristic sort of like a a uh, very heavy flutter. Um, ease, I'd normally this is this is my experience. Ease is normally in the mid morning, you know, from ten and uh, and, and maybe through until uh, midday. Then I tend to uh, find that it uh, will drop off, and then if it's going to happen again, it'll be uh, in the afternoon. Um, I've never had the ease at night here or, um, uh, you know, very early morning or anything like that. Others might have uh, a bit different, but, um, yeah, that's been uh, my experience. Uh, each can be very strong, last for hours or minutes, and even wipe out a closer station on the same frequency. Uh, it's erratic and unpredictable. And, it look, it certainly is. If it's going to start um, and it starts and then you don't know what's going to happen next, it can be really, really strong. Um, stay for hours like it did uh, I think Christmas day last year we had um, ease all day for hours and hours and hours and just uh, really really strong um, very inconvenient because it was Christmas day and you have to be social but um, uh, yes uh, uh, Facebook there's a link to a video there but I think I've actually put that down in the demo a little bit later on with your station IDs, you have to be patient. Um, sometimes you're going to be hearing stuff and you, it's just going to frustrate you because you won't be able to uh, find out what it is because uh, it's too weak. Um, they won't identify. Um, yeah, so you just basically uh, keep listening, especially if it's something that uh, you haven't heard before. Um, it'll probably pay off, that's for sure. All the stations will announce their call signs after their uh, hourly news bulletins, I find. Um, just about everyone will, will, will do that. But um, another good way to find out, especially to find out the location of where it is, is you, you listen for the ads on commercial stations and they have uh, uh, ads. So if you're hearing roundabout tyres, then at Miliquin ad on uh, 102.5, when you live in Adelaide, it's it's going to be Edge FM, that's for sure. Um, but, um, yeah, ads are a really, really good way of... Um, of a, getting a location out of uh, somewhere and it can also give you an idea of where to start uh, looking. 
Uh, Classic FM and Triple J, um, they do have RDS, but it's only in the capital cities. Um, I could be wrong, but I've never seen an RDS signal on a uh, regional Triple J or Classic FM uh, station. So, you know, here in Adelaide, uh, well, and with you guys in Adelaide on 103.9 and 105.5, they have RDS. But um, up here, I have 105.1 for um, uh, Classic FM, and that certainly has no RDS on it. And the ACMA database is a great station ID tool and it's available to everyone. Okay, so in the ACMA database, the ABC is shown as Triple J is the news network. So PNN stands for Parliamentary Network News. ABC FM is Classic. ABC RN is Radio National. ABC um, RR is, um, I believe it stands for, uh, for Regional Radio. And you've also got a local radio. So if you're in Mildura and um, they have a 3MIL, um, that's um, what uh, the local radio is and they'll actually identify as ABC Local. So it's time for a bit of a demo. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna have a little bit of a, a flick around on the, um, on the, on the SDR. We're gonna have a, um, See if we can find a station, if it's got RDS, all good. Um, does it ID while we listen? It'll be a bonus. We can't get an ID um, time to put the frequency into the uh, ACMA database and see what it comes up with. So yeah, if you're hearing DX, do a site search for the TX location as well. So often you can uh, find co-located co uh, transmitters. And um, yeah, don't forget to have fun. So. Um, what I'll do now is we'll um, share the screen so I'm looking at, uh, or you guys are looking at my SDR and uh, we'll go from there. So I will stop this, get rid of that. So Grant might want to let me know if we're seeing the right screen. I think we are. So I'll turn the audio on. Um, can someone let me know that we're hearing the... We can only see the PowerPoint at this stage. Pardon? We can only see your PowerPoint. Yeah, you, okay. haven't, switched, you haven't switched screens yet. You might have to unshare and then reshare re to get your desktop up. Okay. We'll go here again. Yeah. Just give it a sec. There we go. All good. That's working. That's working. That's working. Okay. working. So what we're looking at here is a um, 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 an SDR receiver, obviously. And uh, at the moment, we are on the FM band, obviously. And we can basically click on a frequency like 97.7. It shows us that there's a station there. You guys can uh, can hear that. So it's not all that strong. Um, it's coming in around about, um, about S4. So you can still hear it? No, no audio yet. You might need to no go audio? to the, the other setting I showed you earlier to, to turn the audio on. Or have you got the receiver muted? Now it's got it. That's got it. Okay. Okay, so as I say before, the... Um, we're now looking at a. Um, Glad rags by John English as chosen by our guest mayor of Colac Otway. Steve at ID. Hanson up next, South African-born, French-trained, and Adelaide-based Duncan Velchenet is a chef of many flavors. ABC News. Okay, so that one was quite easy to identify because it was ABC. I've actually got a, a bit of an idea that that actually might be an image. Um, so uh, I will ignore that one. The one next to it here is 97.9. Um, uh, sort of going, fading in and, and fading out. What have we got here? Just a cluster. The information helped shape the decision to go into lockdown. More ABC. They have now learned he actually worked at Pete's shop. Oh. It's 
Strong signal there. Reward with return takes the, the, uh, the TAB up here. Set to go. Let's go up and see if we can um, find anything on uh, Triple M in um, Kultura. Catherine McGann reports. Those are the official. That's Triple M in Mildura, which is quite weak at the moment. There's also a hit in Mildura, which can be a little stronger, which is that one there. There doesn't seem to be um, an awful lot of um, strong stuff around at the moment. So I'll just show you what um, RDS looks like. So if we go down to... Um, I have to scroll through with the mouse because the it's covered up with the um, um, the Zoom settings. So we go to ninety three point one, which is my local station. Sorry, I'm going the wrong way. I bring that to the front. No, I can't. I guess I can. So if I go to ninety three, we were created by people with point one. Disability. Enhanced lifestyles. Now with a local office in Loxton. 85821689. Okay, so this is a, uh, a local station. This is Magic FM. Um, you can see it's very strong. It's 20 over. You can see the um, uh, in here. So we're looking at a um, the audio um, passband of. Um, Take it down to uh, 80 there. So just excuse me, I've got that looking at me, I think. Maybe not. So you can see the stereo pile at times here, and these spurs that I've got the uh, the mouse around now, that um, means that the station has RDS, and uh, you can see up here it's been decoded. And so you've got a Pi code, so... Here it's uh, number five for South Australia, and 931 is the, the last of the uh, frequency there. Um, this PS code here is magic. Um, TY says that it's, uh, the music thing is varied. And uh, here we've got a, um, a, uh, um, a station, uh, sorry, artist and uh, title uh, going. So um, that's a pretty good indication of, um, of what, um, you can see uh, when you've got uh, RDS. So if we go up here to uh, this other strong station here, this is the ABC uh, up here as well. Um, you can see that the um, bus band is narrow, the transmitting in mono, um, whereas this one here is obviously stereo and uh, quite wide. Um, use that uh, to your ad advantage as well but uh, there doesn't really actually seem to be an awful lot um, uh, coming in from uh, any sort of uh, distance tonight which is a bit unfortunate but, um, let's uh, let's go through uh, say for instance I find a station here on um, to step down over the presidential ballot recount on democratic on 91.9 the Secretary of State, the Republican Secretary of State, to resign. Just trying to find something that's not the ABC. Let's go with um, um, with this ninety one point nine. So I'll just bring up a uh, a web browser. Um, I might need to sharing that. So I'll just bring up a web browser. Um, I'll need to share that, I suppose. You see the web browser now? Can you see the web browser? Yeah, we can. You might just want to mute the station because it's a little loud. Okay. It's probably better. It's 
Sorry, I'm just shifting stuff around so I can uh, I can see it. So this is the ACMA Register of Communications Licenses. So you, um, if you bring up the, uh, the ACMA page, this is what you're greeted with. So you put your frequency in here. So we go 91.9. Yep, and then you go up. So even though that we're hearing a, um, a station on there, uh, we know it's not close. So, and we know that um, more than likely it's either going to be uh, something that's uh, um, uh, pretty close and probably within our state, um, you'd be looking at something um, you know, under 100 Ks um, with absolutely no conditions. A little bit of uh, conditions, you might, uh, you might get something. So if we look at um, uh, here, we we'll see we've got something here in, in five, five lands. So it's obviously something in South Australia. So if you click on the, uh, the PDF, it'll give you a li license or a picture of the license. So then it's Nova 919 and it'll tell you, sometimes it'll tell you the, uh, the transmit power, but I'm um, obviously not on, on this license for some reason. It might be under something different. Um, it might be under 5 ADL. Okay, so this one here, yep. So this is going to tell us down here that it's um, general area served is Adelaide. Um, it's mixed polarity and it's 20 kilowatts. So that's the broadcast is Australia site on uh, Summit Road at Crafers. So that's where it's transmitting from. So we know where it's coming from. Um, we know that it's uh, Nova 919 and it's, uh, it's 20 kilowatts. So if it wasn't Nova 919 and um, you're wondering what else it might be, then you'd probably go to the next furthest um, sort of distance out there. So you might be looking at something from VK3. So then you'd go look. Maybe it's three BDG. So you have a look at that. South Melbourne, yeah, not looking all that promising. And go back again to um, something else. Another one there. Andy, you're 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 on the money there. It, it, it's it's only it's the, the registered office is in South Melbourne. I, yeah, I used yeah. to, I used to look after those. Two very stations, so that's definitely in uh, in Bendigo. Yep, so this one here will give us the uh, the location. So this one says it's the BA BA site of Mount Alexander uh, in uh, in Bendigo, so it's quite a quite a possibility that it it could be that. Um, so that one there would be probably identify as hip, I would imagine. I yeah, think well, that's um, sorry. I was going to say the other thing to note, just scroll back to where it talks about the powers. One of the things is a lot of these stations are not omnidirectional. Yeah, um, and, yeah. and you'll see the bearings quote the amount of EIRP in a given direction, and that might give you a clue as well. Yeah, if you go down the down the bottom there. So I'm I'm thinking though, is that because the antenna is on the side of a tower? No, and sometimes their license areas, their their service areas are shaped. And they're not allowed to broadcast in certain directions because that's a different commercial station's um, zone. So that's why the Adelaide right. stations aren't allowed to broadcast east, for example. Yep, yep. Yeah, the antennas are designed with, with front to back ratios and right. specific patterns. Right. But that one in Bendigo is a panel array. So. That's what um, you can do to uh, to look it up on the uh, on the ACMA site. It's just a pity that there's no um, um, conditions at the moment, which makes it a little bit uh, makes the demo a little bit um, you know, sort of naff. So there we go. But um, I'll just go back to the um, back to the PowerPoint. Uh, Uh, 
sorry about this. Um, why can't I see that? You're on the PowerPoint slide now. So if you just yeah, but I want to. I want to get up the slide slow. Where's the slide showing? I can't see it because oh, there we go. I'll just scroll through those slides to where we were. Sorry. It. Okay, well, thank you very much for listening to me ramble on. Um, I hope that sort of gives you a bit of a uh, uh, an insight as to uh, to what I do. It's obviously uh, not the same as what everyone else does, but um, it's a lot of fun. Um, you can hear some uh, amazing things. Uh, just before I go, I'll just what I can do is I can bring up some uh, pictures of uh, of some of the various things that um, we've heard. Uh, over the uh, the course, um, this is um, uh, Hot FM in Mildura, um, 102.3 in Adelaide, um, 2.5 in uh, Edge in uh, in Deniliquin. Um I think that's just Life FM in Adelaide, uh, Triple M obviously, uh, 7.9 Triple M in Mildura. Uh, um, Another Mildura station hit 99. So this is some of the uh, the the DX stuff that um, I've been able to uh, to snag. So this is four RFM in uh, in Queensland. Um, hit 100.3. Um, not quite sure where that where that is it is in Queensland though. Um, 89.1. Um, uh, hit in Mackay, I believe. So um, yeah, one hundred three point five. That's Triple M up in uh, in Mackay. Uh, Zinc ninety six point one in Logan in Queensland. Uh, these are on the uh, omnidirectional and the car radio. Uh, Mix ninety two point seven. Not quite sure where that one is. Hot ninety one point one somewhere in Queensland. Rebel 90.5 in Queensland, uh, Rose FM, uh, Logan, I believe. Um, yeah, um, so that's uh, the KRR's um, antenna array, two of them anyway. Very impressive, uh, uh, impressive uh, setup. Um, and finally, uh, I've got a little, um, how do I get rid of that? I've got a little um, uh, snippet here, um, some video of um, the car radio receiving uh, Triple J in Perth. So hopefully this will play. So that's basically tuning the radio up to uh, 99.3 and um, a uh, RDS for uh, Triple J Perth popping up on the radio. Um, just about fell out of my chair when that happened, that's for sure. That's um, quite, a, uh, quite a distance. 
And the final one I've got to show you is when um, I was driving between Derry and Renmark, and lo and behold, um, New Zealand Radio uh, popped up uh, on FM, which um, I was actually quite amazed. To, uh, to hear uh, that it was pretty scratchy, um, very scratchy actually, but I did actually manage to get a, an ID out of it. So see if we can show that. Here we go. We'll hear it in a sec. RNZ News at Midday, I'm Nicola Wright. A researcher says farmers are feeling like they're villains in the eyes of the public. Oh, yeah. Um very, uh, very, very interesting. Uh, what you can hear if you uh, if you put a bit of um, time and, uh, and effort into uh, getting something that can uh, hear it all. So um, that's it from me. Thank you very much for listening, and uh, I hope you uh, I got something out of it and enjoyed it. All right. Thank you, Andrew. Um, good to uh, good to see the uh, the DXing and uh, all the bits and pieces that you get up to. Um, yeah, I think it's funny. Um, you said before, listening in a car, um, it's amazing what you can hear. So uh, quite frequently, I'm on the highway down to Tail and Bend and back uh, most weekends. And um, normally when I get out past Murray Bridge, the uh, the commercial radio will actually start to fade in and out and you'll hear the audio change. The song's not the same. Um, so quite regularly we hear that. And then shortly afterwards, we start hearing Launceston um, two metre APRS starts to uh, to boom in um, as we go over the back of the hill. So certainly is a bit of fun, that is for sure. So anyway, Andrew, on behalf of the area, I'd like to say thanks again for, uh, for giving us a bit of a talk about FMDX. I'm sure there's plenty of people here that have uh, got their own stories of the stations that they've heard and the ones that got away. Um, but what we'll do now is we'll open it up to uh, some some uh, some comments from the, or some questions from the, from the members. And um, if anybody uh, would like to ask a question, uh, just ask that you, uh, Unmute and uh, and ask away, and uh, and then we'll uh, take some questions uh, from Hayden off of off of YouTube. So I'll throw it open to the members first. So if any members want to go ahead, uh, open your mute and uh, ask the question. Well, I might start the ball rolling. I'm I'm going to give you a, a reverse one, Andy. Um, uh, back in the early '90s, I was the chief engineer of Fox FM in Melbourne, one hundred one point nine, and I got a QSL card from an Argentinian version of you, um, FMDXer, and he was picking up my transmissions from Mount Dandenong. We'd been west, 57 kilowatt peak, and he was hearing it long path. He was looking east. It's about the longest one I've ever heard of. So I had to QSL him, and he was very happy about that. Oh, that's, uh, that's really good. Um, I used to be in contact with one of the guys that was a volunteer at um, uh, 3D Radio uh, back around the time uh, it changed to um, uh, 3D from uh, from Triple M, and uh, back around uh, 2000 2001, uh, they actually got a QSL uh, card from a station in Hawaii who heard the 3D radio transmission uh, in Hawaii. So uh, that was a that's a pretty good uh, haul as well. Andrew, I'm curious, have you ever gone looking for any of the Japanese FM stations? Because the Japanese FM band is quite different to ours. It's 76 to 95 megs. Um, no, and, I have, and I have run across some of the Japanese FM transmitters, um, not in Japan, but some of the Pacific Islands are actually running them as well because the cars they import have all got Japanese car radios. Yes, um, yep. And so the, I think Niue actually has a 78 megahertz FM station. That's a repeat of their other one. It's on 100 megahertz. 
um, just for the people with the Japanese cars. I don't know whether it's, it's very hard to find out the frequency listings for them, but uh, I don't know if that was something that you'd ever gone looking for, or ever looked for the, the, in fact, pointed north on F2 and had a look and see whether you could see any of it. Uh, actually, it's a classic case of um, of good thinking, uh, 99, uh, Grant, because um, now that I've got an SDR and I can actually tune down there, um, especially um, with um, the cycle picking up, et cetera, et cetera, it's going to be uh, beneficial. Um, and it's also uh, a bit closer to, uh, to six metres too. So if there's six metres coming in for Japan, it would be definitely worth uh, having a listen around there to see if um, it can hear anything over. And of course, TV Channel 2 is gone, so the spectrum is not full of rubbish from them. No, that's, that's exactly right. So, yep. Yep. Got a question from YouTube, Andrew, from John Desmond. What's the best sporadic EDX you've heard, i.e. in excess of one hop, 2,500 kilometres? In excess of 2,500 kilometres, I suppose, um, probably Perth. Um, Perth and um, and New Zealand around. I think the distance is around about the same. So, yeah, that's the best for me so far. Far north Queensland's about um, nineteen hundred k's from here. So, remember, I'm two hundred and fifty kilometres um, uh, northeast of uh, of Adelaide. So, I don't have any uh, coastal uh, stuff um, because obviously not near the coast. But um, yeah, and. We'll get we'll get further. We'll hear things uh, further. So, a lot of the guys on the east coast they hear uh, the Pacific Islands quite often on on FM. Uh, it all depends on your conditions, I suppose, and and your location. Any other questions from members? So just a comment from what Grant was saying earlier. You you might have a yeah shot when uh, when JA comes in. On when is it the equinox time? When's that? The April, April, May, May time. You might start to hear Japan then. So you might be able to extend that distance out, Andrew. Oh, hopefully I can. Hopefully um, um, uh, I've got a, a six metre antenna coming uh, pretty soon. Um, and I'll certainly be, uh, certainly be listening um, if six metres is going to Japan, that's for sure. Yeah, Andrew, Hayden. oh sorry, mate. Sorry, um, Mark's, pop, Mark's popped up a five eight ABQ. Mark's popped up. Um, what SDR am I using? I'm using a uh, RSP A one uh, Mark from SDR Play. And the reason why I chose that is because the software that it came with did RDS. That was one of the main reasons why I chose it over, say, an Airspire. Andrew, have you ever considered Hello, something like uh, using uh, you know, Mark's uh, script that he wrote for the LTE uh, against the uh, RTO SDR and detecting the RDS signal and then logging that or uh, or even just um, you know, making a bit of a beacon so that you know when it's up? I'm sorry, I missed the first part of that question. Mark, uh, Mark's written a script uh, that uh, looks for LTE signals and does a bit of a decode to identify whereabouts they are. I'm just wondering if we can modify that a little bit. Completely different script there, Derek. Completely different but, approach, unfortunately, sorry. You don't reckon we can decode at all? No, diff at diff diff different approach, different approach completely on that script, sorry. Okay, yeah, that's cool. I think just the general principle <sighs> of, of being able to tune an SDR maybe, and uh, you know, being able to somehow decode the, the uh, the RDS single might might work and just be nice sort of logging, you know, yeah. uh, and give you a bit of a heads up, maybe. Yeah. I guess your concept there, Derek, is effectively an FM broadcast band skimmer that's basically trying to skim the RDS channels off of every transmitter it can hear. Exactly, and you could pretty much pull it off of you know, the ACMA website or something like that, and actually do a um, you know make it a bit of an API or a bit of a, a an ongoing update. And uh, anyway, it's it's certainly you know automate it, but uh, yeah, depending on what what you're into, I suppose in the end of the day, so. Yeah, that's very uh, very interesting actually. I'm I'm heavy, I'm about a third into a very heavy Python course at the moment, so I'm learning all about Python. So that could be uh, something to look at. Do they change their RDS codes very often, or do they usually once they get one that's just that's theirs and they don't change it? Well, I can answer that. Um, I was on the committee that actually brought that into Australia, and once you got the code, 
you keep the code because it can also tie in with the DAB. And not that we do it in this country, but you can have the um, receiver switch between DAB and FM. But yeah, once the code's issued to, the, for, to that particular license, it stays. You'll probably do a presentation on just RDS by itself, Steve. Probably could. There's so much to it. Yeah. All right, very goodly. We'll give the members one more chance if there's any questions. Um, otherwise, what we'll do is um, we'll probably bid our uh, YouTube friends goodbye and um, and uh, probably get stuck into a uh, little bit of uh, little bit of A-Rig business. So if there's any final questions, um, please go ahead. Yeah, I've got a question, Andy. I've got that same Kenwood head unit that you're using. It's installed in my car. But when yeah. you're using that, or when you're in your car, do you just stick it into scan mode and wait to see what you pick up? Wait till it stops? Oh, absolutely not. You've got to manually tune. Otherwise, um, it'll just skip straight past it. Yeah, okay. I think the scan relies on um, you know a rock crushing signal to uh, to stop the uh, the scan and um, a lot of the time uh, you're hearing stuff even though it's it's coming through uh, loud and clear it's uh, it's not very uh, strong in return in terms of receiver strength. I mean it's perfectly audible and uh, there's no noise on it but um, it's not a strong signal so the scan is not going to um, stop on it. Okay, cool. Thanks for that. Cool. Um, Do it. Andrew, have you had issues with um, strong signals stomping on um, weaker signals or are we, are the, or the FM broadcast stations in Australia kind of spread out enough that not to be really an issue? Um, well, it is an issue up here because, I've, as I said uh, before, I've got a, um, a major broadcast site about 19 kilometres from me. Luckily, they transmit everything on the tower transmits vertical polarisation. Um, if they transmitted mixed polarisation, I reckon I'd be... Uh, I reckon I'd be stuffed. So um, most of the time, my antennas here, well, all of the time, my antennas here are horizontally polarised. So I get a bit of attenuation uh, from that. But if I point one of my antennas, or if I point the Yagi at the at the tower, all I hear is uh, is images, unfortunately. If I turn away, um, um, it's okay. And if I drop the gain down and... Uh, and what have you. And that's one thing, one good thing about having the um, uh, the uh, software to find radio um, is you can uh, muck around with things like gain and uh, how wide your filters are and uh, and what have you. So it's 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 pretty handy. But um, um, at the end of the day, the Kenwood car radio um, seems to uh, to handle it uh, very well. I don't really have a lot of problems with uh, intermod and uh, and what have you on on that. Um, even though the the signals are, are very very strong on on some stations, so uh, okay. if you're up in the middle of nowhere, you won't have a problem. But um, I don't know how you go uh, living in the in the foothills where you can see Mount Lofty. So there's a new there's a new feature that came out in STR Sharp recently. Um, unfortunately, it's not going to work on the STR Play. Um, but what he's done is he's added a co-channel canceller. So what that it's more targeted at the guys in the US who have many many stations on every frequency but it will go through essentially receive lock onto the strongest signal and then subtract it from the IQ spectrum, allowing you to hear what's underneath of it, which is pretty cool. And I've seen it in operation and it's just insane what it does. Um, but um, I guess around here, it's probably not so much of an issue. Um, it's not going to work with overload, but talk, we're talking about two stations that are actually on the same frequency or are oh, closely okay. yep. based, um, which yep. obviously isn't yep. probably an issue here so much or less of an issue. Um, but it is unfortunately a, um, it's pretty much limited to the air spires only. It's one of, one of their little selling points they get you. If you buy an air spy, you can get this DSP with it. But um, anyway, something interesting that came up about two weeks ago when that was released. Yeah. Um, another thing that's been mentioned as well is the uh, RSP um, uh, duo um, has uh, two antenna slots and apparently you can uh, phase the uh, the signal um, and use noise cancelling uh, with that. So that could be another uh, thing that could be very handy. Oh, for definitely. That, that'd be very, very, very valuable to be able to do exactly the same kind of thing. Yep, yep. That omnidirectional antenna that was in one of your slides, uh, Andrew, the halo loop, I ended up picking up yep. one of those, I think brand new from Element 14 for I think $10. So they're really a real cheap, easy antenna to get started with.
Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and they, I'm amazed at how well it worked. Okay, I think Matt wants to go to the uh, the meeting. Yeah, no worries there, Andrew. All right, well, listen, thank you again for uh, for answering a few of the questions. Hopefully, um, quite a few people have uh, gotten something from your talk tonight. I certainly uh, have learned a bit about uh, some of the software that you've been using there. So I'll be definitely digging up my RSP1A that I've got lying around here somewhere. It's in one of these boxes above me. Um, <laughs> We'll have to go see if we can find it and have a bit of a play. So thanks again, Andrew, and um, we'll um, we'll also say goodbye to our uh, to our YouTube uh, friends as well. So we wish them uh, all the best, and um, thanks again to Hayden for for broadcasting it. So what we'll do now is um, now that we've dropped the. Well, Andy.